There is no um, government agency that I'm aware of like Enterprise Ireland in the U.S. And when I was in your seat and came to Ireland and met with these companies, I was astounded and duly impressed by what the government agency does in funding for innovation, the way it increases awareness and the development of Irish businesses, and the way to make it international. So as you can see here, Enterprise Ireland exists everywhere globally. Now you as customers of the ILA, if you're in Brussels, for chance, or Beijing, and you're working and you're just, you need somebody there, some insight, please call Laura and I and we can connect you to the folks there. I work with the most wonderful people globally. Um, I get very excited about the ILA, as many of the CEOs will tell you. And I truly love hearing the story about it because I came in at such a crucial time. The CEOs had been meeting long before the ILA was branded. 2002 is when they came together and I think the story was that they even kicked out the Enterprise Ireland people so that the CEOs could get together and really talk about the industry and feel comfortable and know where they're headed. So when I went to work with these folks, I said, you may want to mention that you're Irish because there's a real common thread and I don't know if it's you guys talk to each other and do this on purpose or if it's just what comes out of Ireland. So that was really important and it was great to speak with the CEOs. They were open, willing to listen and really see what they could do to serve their customers in the U.S. The flexible partnerships are also crucial. Many times, and you'll hear this in the CEO panel, many times these companies will lean on each other if they're looking to target a specific area and they're up against you know, vendors from Canada and India and the low cost, quick fix type of folks. What can they do about that? As an industry, where could they head in regard to that? Coming to QA or even resources, you know, rather than going out and spending a lot of money hiring groups to support maybe one initiative, they would lean on each other and talk to each other. Now, I'm not going to you know, lie and say, oh, they shared everything. That would be unproductive. But we're needed. And they'll share those stories with you as well. They would share resources for particular projects. They would have confidentiality among the employees. And, and from what I'm hearing, it's, it's really working. And, and everybody sees the value in it. In 2008, this Irish Learning Alliance appeared even bigger and broader than any learning company in the world, with 5 million users and then over 500 staff employed in Ireland. There's not one company that I'm aware of in this industry that has that impact and power. We did a hard launch of the Irish Learning Alliance at the CLO Symposium in 2008. Previous to that, we were virtual and we were getting our feet and we were doing focus groups based on my background. You know how much I put these guys through, checking it out and making sure we were headed. And I'm really pleased to say that what you're experiencing now is just the first of many. If it's something that you all find really beneficial to your job and beneficial to the industry. So please let us know that throughout the day. We want to ensure that we as a whole, these companies, contribute to a significant body of research and that's where the Irish government has put and funded. So your companies can benefit from that three million dollars in R&D and we want to make sure that you're aware of it and that today's session gives you the information to empower everyone in this room to do that. Raise a hand, how many people realize that this many companies came out of Ireland? Okay, that, that is the reaction we get, and that was the secret that I was shocked to find out when I went over to Ireland, and I just didn't understand there's, you know, just a, a modesty in Ireland that really I, I had to be the American to come over and say, we need to fly, I'm Irish American, so even exaggerated, you know, fly the flag and let's show people that this is the birthplace of e-learning, as been said by some and many thought leaders, and this is why. When you look at the tech space, it goes back to CBT and Intuition, who's an ILA member here, truly at the beginning. And we get into the multimedia world and we get WBT, Interactive Services, Johnny's the ex-CEO of Electric Paper that was acquired by Third Force. We then look at Smart Force, Skillsoft, and we have the ILA members, Pulse Learning in there with Inner Workings, Third Force that later acquires Mind Leaders. Really, a, a really neat story and something that many people can think and, and strategize differently about when they realize the connections and really the, the common thread that goes through these companies.